Excuse me. Simeon Siler is the kicker. Adam Allen, number five. Number six, I'm Simon Simeon Siler. Number ten, Levi Sounds. Number twelve, Ross Bauer. Number twenty, Josh Holmes. Number forty-eight, Paul Gilliland. Number fifty-two, George Boack. Fifty-four, Joey Frosher. Sixty-two, Dan Burke. Seventy-six, Jeremiah Meeks. Seventy-eight, Austin Rogers. And the punter, number 88, Cody Howe. The name goes to a lot. You know, we, now we, I tell people, I compared to what we used to do with Johnson County, yeah. until the first time we tell people we were yeah. number two in the nation. Yeah, it's like, can't you be a Right. And just the word against it. Cracking his knuckles. All right. Okay, so Hanson will kick to Jed Moore. No, he will kick to Hanson. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hanson will kick to Jed Moore. It's going on in my mind. I'd like to apologize to both sides of the field for all the mistakes on people's names, but I just get so excited, I can't see what I'm saying, so bear with us. Okay. I guarantee you won't be the only mistakes made here today. <laughs> Joined by Howie Smith, special guest commentator with this one. Should be a great one today. A, a playoff battle in eight-man division two. The number one team in the state is Hanston. And the team trying to knock them off is the homestanding Ingalls Bulldogs. Howie. A chance for you to see one of the best high school football teams in the state for the first time and a very young and up-and-coming Ingalls team. Well, you're exactly right. This is, as a matter of fact, my first high school game this year, but I've been able to see Coach Slayton's teams play in years past. And I'm sure with Coach Slayton, nothing has changed. They're going to run the football at you, and they're going to do a lot of things fundamentally right. And, and like I say, a, a young ball club in Ingalls that uh, Coach Gilling's really got this program and this town on the rise. They know they can up and go up. from the west, which this is an east-west field, so it's at the back of Ingles here in the first half. Ingles will move away. It is a high, short kick. It will drop it all inside the 10-yard line where it is picked up by Josh Holmes. Looking for running up the middle, the 15. The near side has a block. Tries to get to the 20, the 25, and a great kickoff return by Josh Holmes right there. Holmes broke about four tackles and, and Simon actually made a game a game down uh, touchdown Hanston will start this drive on their own 28-yard line. The quarterback is Levi Salmons, 49 of 93, passing for 722 yards. He's thrown 15 touchdown passes and two interceptions, and he's rushed for 882 yards and 11 touchdowns. Adam Han is the tailback. He's rushed for 911 yards and 20 touchdowns, and Paul Gilliland is the fullback. First down and 10, they'll give it off to Hand. Running through in the clear, 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 10, five. He will fumble the football out of bounds at the one yard line, but the very first play of the ball game and Hanson almost goes the distance. Well, I think Coach Dilling and his Inga Bulls did not want. They, they, they deferred for the second half, straight ISO play. And they threw it out of the two-yard line where it fumbled out of bounds. It's not the kind of stuff that people are doing about the bounds. If they decide to kick off, see the other defense go to work. 47-yard gain on the first play of the game. And that is just, that's Hanson Elks football right there. They'll go with it. Two back set, split backs behind the quarterback, Levi Salmons, and he will give it off to Hand, who will go in untouched. Touchdown. How long did it take? 
It took 24 seconds. And never got touched. Uh, Brackney never got touched even when he made the 47 yard run right at the last. He stripped the ball out of, out of bounds. But uh, again, what Hanson wanted to do, not what Eagles wanted to do. Well, they'll go for two here. Up six to nothing. Levi Salmons brings them up. Split back. And the pitch to the near side, looking for running room is, oh, and he stumbles, but he'll wave it dead. The carry by Josh, the two-point conversion, no good. So a little bit of good news for the Ingalls Bulldogs. We will take a quick break. 11.36 remaining first quarter. It is Hanston, six, Ingalls, nothing. Playoff football here on U96.3. 30. That was quick. Just a straight ice Could could be. <laughs> I I said it wouldn't. <coughs> well, we've been playing a grand total of 24 seconds. It is six to nothing, Hanston. A two-play drive, a 47-yard run, and a two-yard run by Adam Hand. The two-point conversion run fails. It's six to nothing, Hanston. Here. And now the Elks will kick it away. Simeon Seiler will boot it away from the 30-yard line. It is high. Line drive taken to the 15-yard line by Travis Murray. Looks for running room 20, 25, 30. And he'll find his way out to the 30-yard line. Uh, that is where the Ingalls Bulldogs will start this drive, first down and 10. Brought down by number 12. Uh, top, first and 10, Bulldogs. Uh, Eagles offense coming out, one of the top, probably sophomore quarterbacks, not just in Southwest Kansas, but it's in Chad Gerber. Chad Gerber has thrown for 1,212 yards, 30 touchdown passes, only five interceptions. He had four INTs in the two games I've seen against Weskin the other night and then against Rolla two weeks ago. Shotgun set with uh, wideouts left and right for uh, Chad Gerber and the Ingalls Bulldogs on first down and 10 from their own 31, trailing six to nothing. Back to pass, now he wants to run. He has a little bit of running room. Across the 35, across the 40, and again, the Kansas territory. At the 38-yard line, he was knocked down by Philip Groves, but moved the chains. First down, Ingalls. Well, Ingles, the and the shotgun, one running back. They really spread the field out to get to open holes in the middle of the field for a dribble to make sure he's going to Shotgun well. set wide outs left and right with a a tailback flanking Gerber to the left. He wants to throw. Has a man left side passes caught at the 30-yard line. Pass caught by Eric Wendell. And Wendell will spin down to the 27. So a gain on the play of 11. Was there a fumble that he fumbled the ball? I thought his knee was down. A slow call, but uh, the ball was stripped. And uh, number 12, Russ Bauer, uh, made the tackle. And I believe number 5, Adam Hannon, jumped on the ball. And that's a problem right there for Ingles. But again, you're playing the number one right team in the state. You have a nice drive. Now for the long run, the now this drive will start on the 27-yard line as opposed to the 28. Ingles was moving the football, but the turnover is costly, costly, costly. First down and 10 for the bold, for the uh, Hanson Elks, the quarterback Levi Salmons, and a flat drive. Is this delay a game? Yes, it is. Five yards penalty against Hanson. Standing up in the defensive end, the first play here before we had the play of game, they actually shifted over to the wide receiver side. So we'll see if Easton has a likes to run to the wide receiver side and see if Ingles can adjust by putting an extra man. Angles got here by beating Weskin 48 to 46 in overtime, trailing by 20 in the second half. Hanson beat Ashland 46-22. Salmon lost a throw. Has a man across the middle and complete. Pass was intended for Joe Dvorak. It'll be second down and 15. Dvorak lining up as, as I believe the offensive tackle can go up for passes in this game, but nobody even pushed him. You know, you've got to jam him and then let him go. Dvorak was wide open. Uh, the big, the big guy at 166 pounds. Wide over to Levi, just over here. Well, you know, talking about that game the other night, Hanson beat Aston 46-22, the first time they played 
They've been pushed to play an entire game all season long. Second down and 15 from back at the 22. And option left. And well, like, what happened there? Before the play. That's exactly what it is. Another five-yard penalty against Hanson. And Howie, this is the third time I've been over here in the past couple of weeks. This crowd is stoked. They are into it. Yes, they are. And, and it's too bad for Ingles that time because number 77, Dwayne Doyle, read the option play, shut the eight gap, which is between the center of the guard. And the back back. Uh, flag brings up second down. Second down and 20 now. Back inside the 20 yard line at the 17. Hand has it this time. Looking for room behind the left side of that line. He'll gain about five. Give him four to the 21, and that's it. Now, this is a big statement of time for the Seagulls defense. They, they drove the ball offensively. They gave up a couple of numbers, 24 seconds, two plays. They need to force the ball. They need to the ball. They can't stop them. Well, big play right here. It's third down and about 17 or so. The ball sitting on the 22. Hanson looking at third and 17, leading 6 to nothing here in the first quarter over Ingles in Ingles. One back set this time. Wideouts left and right. Back to pass. Here comes a blitz from behind, and Salmon goes down back inside the pitch. And leading the charge that time was uh, that was uh, the Bobby Penner, I think it was. Loss of eight on the play brings down fourth down at about 23 or so. The line of scrimmage is the 12 yard line. So Ingalls will get the ball back. It's punt time. Number 88, Howell. Cody Howell will punt it away for Hanston. Standing inside his five. Gets the punt away. Low line drive. It could be picked up. Nope, it's going to roll inside the 30 yard line and be downed at the 27 yard line. So Ingalls dodged the bullet after the turnover that time, but they will get the ball back. And you know something? Uh, go back and look at my numbers here. I want to say that is probably about the uh, that is the ninth punt of the season for Hanston. Yeah, normally, when your games get over at halftime and, and <laughs> you've, put up, you've won by more than 45, you're not going to have to punt very often. Two good young quarterbacks, Levi Salmon and uh, Chad Berber here. Should be a fun day with these two young men. Line of scrimmage is the 27-yard line. Gerber will hand off this time and give it to the fullback. Is that Steimel? Yep, I think it is. That's Wes Steimel who gets across the 30-yard line out to the 32. Wes Steimel had a great game on Tuesday night. Scored five touchdowns, three rushing, two passing, and caught a huge two-point conversion pass that tied the game up at 40 with about a 30 seconds to go in that game. Wes Steimel changed his defense a little bit after that first series. Now he went... When they're in tight, they're going to go to a 5-1 defense uh, as we've got an equipment uh, timeout. Timeout for 62 Dan Burke. Uh, good looking 222 pound senior. Yeah, Dan Burke wrecks havoc on offenses across the southwest part of the state. Back to pass Gerber, right side passes behind West Dimel. It's incomplete. That'll bring up third down in about six or so. Chad Gerber passed for 224 yards the other night against Weskin. The bulk of those in the second half. In the first meeting, Gerber was 8 for 23, 116 yards passing, two touchdowns, interception, but the key was he was sacked 10 times. And that is one thing. You've got to keep the heat off Gerber as much as you can today to be successful if you're the Ingalls Bulldogs. Third down and six from the 30-yard line or so. A one-back set this time, and a whistle will stop play. A flag across the way. Didn't see anybody on the offensive line move. Line of scrimmage is the 32, to be more precise. It is against Ingles. Knock them back five. It'll be third and 11. Bruce uh, Slayton talked uh, about the last win they had was uh, against Ashland. Very disappointed in the tackle. He got a lot of those yards that Ashland got. Not to take anything away from the OJs because they're very physical, but uh, he really went back to fundamentals. Poor tackling. And, and again, this is an Eagles team that, especially with the spread offense, when you're so much one on one, you miss a tackle, Eagles will be done for touchdown. Third down and 11 for Eagles. Up under center this time is the sophomore quarterback, Gerber. He wants to throw. Nope, it's a drop play. Hands it off to West Steimel. Steimel will gain about three or four. He'll get out to about the 28 or so. Not enough. Third down and 11 becomes fourth down and eight. So a gain of three for West Steimel, and it's time to punt again. A good call by Coach Dillon. Take away the pressure of 10 sacks from the last game. You've got to run some three. Keep those 
at home, so they just can't do it. All season long, Hanson gave up 127 yards of rushing. All season long, the other night against Ashland, they gave up 221. Short kick. Short kick will roll out of bounds. And let's see where they spot it at. They're going to give him a spot. They still haven't marked it yet. They're going to mark it at about the 33-yard line, and that is where Hanson will take over. First down and 10 from their own 33. Fisher was ever going to stop uh, as he was walking up. Uh, that, that, uh, that pump was almost blocked. So, uh, again, good field position for Hanson on their third possession. Here in the first half, uh, in the fourth game. First down and 10 from the 33 yard line. Hanson leading 6 to nothing, and they've got the ball back. Split backs behind. Levi Salmons. Option play to the near side as Salmons running on 40, 35, 30. He's in the clear. 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Hanson Elms. That. The reverse option, number 60, uh, Chris Schmidt was the weak side linebacker, could not get over. Uh, Levi was his key, and he just couldn't get enough of an angle. And Levi goes uh, 40, 47 yards. That makes it 12 to nothing. And the Hanston snowball begins to build momentum. Two point conversion attempt, split backs. Salmons will pitch left, trying to find some running around the corner. He stopped again. And we'll take a break. From Ingles, Hanston scores again. A 47-yard run by the quarterback Levi Salmons. Two-point conversion run fails. It's 12 to nothing, Hanston. So Tyler, one of the problems I think opponents have had against Hanson is they put up 20, 30, 36 points in the first quarter and take you out of your game. Cody right? Wagner on the return, picks it up at the 15-yard line. He, did he fumble the football? I think he did. Big pile up. Hanson says they have it. And they'll give it to Ingles. And let's face it, um, Ingles needs something good offensively. A little pitching catch, they run with their spread offense, try to get a five yard, six yard hitch, try to break the tackle. But uh, they, they need to have something good offensively happen on this series. First down and 10 for Ingles from their own 22 yard line. I formation this time. Cody Wagner and, Lee, and uh, Wes Steimel, and now a flag drops on the far side, and he's getting awful used to dropping that flag across there. He's it's a five-yard penalty, a legal procedure against Ingles. How do you, did you see anybody moving that time? No, I didn't. And, and, uh, I don't know if somebody's if they're getting down to their three-point stance and then he brings his hand up a little bit or they flinch a little bit or something, but uh, you wouldn't think, uh, you know, is it the nerves of, of playing a Hanson? But gosh, after the game Ingles had with Weston the other night, uh, you get to this point, you played already 10 games for the year. Pull your head down, let's go! First down and 15 now, back at the 17. I formation set, a tight set, and the give this time, that is uh, Cody Wagner. And he will get across the 20, out to the 21. Second down and a long 11 here. Shotgun set, spread it out with three wide to the near side. Gerber back to pass, looking, now he's flushed, rolling right, and he's going to go down. Joey Frusher gets him, and he'll be taken down inside the 15-yard line, back at the 13. Kind of tough to see the yard markers here in the in the sun, it's so bright out there. It is, and that time, again, four wide receivers spread it out, trips on the left side. Hanson went man-to-man -man on each wide receiver, three down linemen, the middle linebacker, the snap went, each offensive lineman took one down, that left the middle linebacker who blitzed in. And again, if you're going to try to block three on four, it's not going to happen. Third down and about 19 or so, shotgun set, wideouts left and right. And Gerber, low snap, picks it up. Now he wants to run with it. And he will maybe get back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. As the play was blown up from the start when he fumbled the snap, Paul Gilliland in there to make the stop. 
and they'll give him about two on the carry. That's about it. I hate to use the word hog tying them, but I mean they are wrapping them up and taking them down. Nathan Oman will punt it away. Gets a good punt with the breeze. It will be taken to the 22 yard line by Josh Holmes. Near side 30, 35. Across field field 40. Down to the 35 and out of bounds. And Hanson will start this drive with great field position. Flag on the play. I believe it's a legal block back here. Uh, illegal block in the back. And, and I think I know who it is, but I won't mention his name. But it was clearly a block in the back. Yeah, that was a very easy one. And, uh, so again, Hanson's going to go 10 yards back. It looks like they'll probably start at about, what, the 18 yard line? 19 yeah, yard which is better off because the, they'd had a nice return. And Josh Holmes will run it back across midfield to about the Ingalls 32 or so. So they will mark it at the 19, and that is where Hanston will start this drive. When you call Hanston, it's not the long drives that, that you beat. It's just, you know, big play. 27 yards off by a 27 yard touchdown by South. It's the big play that you have to stay away from. Make this drive and call the Gimmel in the fullback is a single back in the backfield behind Salmons. And Salmons, near side, runs it. 25, 30, 35, out near the 40. He'll go down at the hands of the 38-yard line. But a flag on the play. We'll see what this is. I have no idea about this one. Bring him back. That's one thing. Hanson has been uh, bitten by a couple of... A couple three penalties now that have hurt him on drives. Although it hasn't hurt him that much. He scored two touchdowns. Well, that, that time over the road. The strong side was the left side. You can tell the Hanson offensive line. Eagle shifted over that way. It looks like Levi came up and, and audible with a check with me. And, and what he does is he reads the Eagles defense, see where their strong side is, and they're going to run weak side because they've got three guys on this side blocking two off. Eagles and the D backs have to come from the weak side to, to make the tackle. They're going to give him a gain of 18. The middle of the there, and now a handoff up the middle. That's the fullback, Gilliland. Just pulling over people across the 30, across the 35, out of the 37. They get the lead on you. Now they're just going to punish you, punish you, punish you with that big offensive line with Burke and, and Dvorak and, 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 and I mean, they're just so physical. First down and 10 for the Hanson Elks at their own 37-yard line, and now a whistle will stop play and flag on the play and most likely some kind of a legal procedure. After seeing it, that's what yep, Hanson walking backwards. That's exactly what it is. These, these side judges are sure seeing some of you and I are. We were right in line with it. And, and again, I did not see anything. I guess as the playoff, they're expected to be perfect. No movement. 5-10 remaining in the first quarter. It is 12 to nothing. Hanston over Ingles. The Elks with the ball. First down and 15. Back at their 33. Option left. Pitch around the corner goes home. He'll get out across the field and be down at the 39-yard line. He will gain about 10 on the play. Will bring up second down and five. Good block by uh, the wide receiver after Philip Rose was after blocking. Oh, and again, Levi pitched on the defensive end. Pitch on the defensive end. Make him take you. The wide receiver. He's the deep back. I'll tell you who's not in the ball game right now is Adam Hand. Haven't seen him in there for a while. Let's let him wind up at a tight right. No, I don't think it is. Adam Hand is not in the ball game. Gilliland right up the middle. Well, carried across the 35, 30 in the clear now. 20, 15, and drugged down inside the 10. They will mark him at the seven. Cody Wagner came all the way across the field to make that tackle. It's just a simple ISO play. It, it's just man on the goal. Goal. Line defensive line. Gillian found the hole, broke it outside, and got down to, what did you say, about the six-yard line? About the six or seven, a 32-yard run by the fullback Paul Gilliland. And it will be first down and goal now. And they'll spot it at the seven. First and goal at the seven. You're right. It, it's not the little plays. It's the big plays. First down and goal from the seven-yard line. Split backs. Power to the right set. And a little count. Nope. Salmons will keep it. And he'll go into the end zone untouched. Touchdown. Levi Salmons. 
a seven yard Good touchdown run. That's why Salmon's faked the cross buck. Actually faked to both running backs. They crisscrossed and he just followed the, the uh, off back through the hole and ran in and touched on the seven yard touchdown. That'll make it 18 and nothing. Another two point conversion. And that's one thing that Hanson has not been able to be successful on. The only thing is two point conversions are 0 for 2. That touchdown comes with 3.59 remaining in the first quarter. Two point conversion time. Salmons, play action, rolling right, dumps it in. And wide open is Joe DeVore, complete. And we'll go to a break. It is 20 to nothing. Hanson over Engels with 3.59 remaining in the first quarter. As the game of the week playoff style continues right here on U96.3. 30. Nine remaining first quarter. Hanston 20. Ingles nothing. Levi Salmons a second touchdown run. That of seven yards. And a two-point conversion pass from Salmons to Joe Dvorak. Tom, during the break, I, I, I tried to find Adam Hannon. Uh, Coach Slayton's over there taping up his knees. Travis Murray with the return for Ingles this time. And he will go down hard. Just outside the 20-yard line. That's something about eight-man football. You got the head coach over there taping up the star running back. That's what, that's what I love about this game. Those four head coaches up there and everything. And Tom, right now, Ingles has come from behind before uh, against a very good West team just Tuesday night. And right now, again, sustained drive, pitching catch like they're used to in that spread offense. But give River a little bit of time to throw the football. Shotgun set, empty backfield with Gerber, except for three wides to the near side and a wide out right. Gerber, low snap, here comes the blitz. He rolls left and he goes down. He's not, he cannot have three offensive players blocking four defensive players, and especially a young man like Joey Fruscher, 222-pound senior. He, he is going to, all he's doing is keying uh, Gerber back there. The, the, line, the offensive linemen are kicking up with the three defensive linemen. Gerber's coming in. It's like the party in the Red Sea. He finds a gap and he is keying on Gerber. Well, Fruscher came in there and flushed him out and Gerber got hit by Philip Bros. He gets credit for the sack, but it was Frusher who blew up the play. Loss of three, brings up second down and 13. Back at the 22-yard line, Gerber rolling right, wants to pass. Lays it out there and overshoots his intended receiver, Jeremy Salem, incomplete. And that'll bring up third down and 13. And every Hanston game I've seen, except for the state championship game last year, where they won it, I believe 26-22, I think was the final in that game. Every other game I've seen against a Southwest Kansas opponent has been just like this. There is a, there is, they get in the heads. I mean, they get in a, the other team's heads, and they have a, the snowball starts rolling downhill. That's what's happening right here. Third down and 13. Gerber up under center this time. Play action. Wants to screen and nothing doing. Gilliland just blasts through and rips him down back inside the 10. Perhaps they're going to mark him up. forward progress at the 13. Tom, I've got that unofficially the fourth sack of the game and the sixth hurry of the game for Chad Gerber. And, and again, and he's back there in the shotgun formation, which is should even give him a little bit more time. And they will punt the football away. Nathan Oman will stand inside his 10. And the snap is away and a nice punt. Oman with the breeze will drive Josh Holmes back to the 21, 25, 30. 35, and he'll stay on his feet and go back down to the 30 yard line. Coverage by Eagles, number 52. Keith Lipp was down there along with number 7. Uh, Cody Beach was down there for, for Eagles. No, I said the 30, it's actually the 35, and that is where Hanson will start this drive. With 2.26 remaining in the first quarter, Hanson already on top, 20 to nothing. Oh, I was giving some accolades to the Hanson offensive line. I sure don't want to forget the center, number 76, Jeremiah Meeks, 238-pound junior. First down and 10 for Hanston from their own 35. Adam Hans still not in there, I doubt we'll see him. And Salmons is wrapping back for a four on the fly. Bobby Pat, the defensive end, just leveled it. The offensive lineman, the guy that just blew that whole play out. And so Levi did the smart thing, just ate the ball and took the loss. So it'll be second down and 13, a loss of three. 
These Hanston Elks have won 57 of their last 59 games. Their only two losses have been in the state championship game. And they're looking to get back there again. Second down and 13. Back at the 32. Salmon's lost to throw. Steps up, dumps it off. Passes complete. Joe DeVore across midfield. Still on his feet across the 35-yard line. Fumbled the ball out of bounds, and they're marking it to 33. So a gain on the play. Uh, 15 yards pass completion. Levi Salmons to Joe Dvorak, and Dvorak catches his eighth ball of the season. Well, and what happens is it, as a defense, you tend to forget about Dvorak as the tackle, tight end, slash, whatever you want to call it. And, and again, nobody's chucking him at the line of scrimmage to at least slow him down. And again, Levi on the opposite side having plenty of time to throw. But again, two handsome fumbles, very fortunate. Both of them going out First down and 10 now as Hanson is in Ingalls territory at the 33 yard line. Empty backfield this time, man in motion from right to left is Josh Hall. 